Hey there, it's Ruth Sherman, CEO and celebrity speech and media coach, but you don't have to be famous to work with me. I was hoping that two of my clients who were up for Oscars, which was just last week, uh, were going to win, but unfortunately they didn't. So I'm still stuck with only five Oscar winning clients instead of seven. And I will tell you, these two put out some great stuff, then you've probably seen it. And I'm dying to tell you, but I can't. Okay. Uh, so what has been on my mind lately is the fact that so many professionals, this is prospective clients, even clients that come to me finally, uh, have, uh, who have finally decided to get, uh, to, to master and polish up their speaking and communication skills, why they've left it, let it go for so long, why they have left it at the very bottom of their to-do list as they have been climbing the corporate ladder or growing their respective businesses. And my take on it is that they've got it backwards. They've got it backwards. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about why it's so important that you put communication, speaking and presentation skills first and everything else behind it. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some very good reasons as to why if you're thinking about doing something about it, but you're not, and you've been putting it off and putting it off, hopefully this will give you some very good reasons as to why it makes sense to start mastering these types of skills. So here's the first one. The ability to present oneself with confidence and charisma is incredibly client attractive. You know, it is, it is pull marketing in its most pure form. Think about it. When you see someone else who is engaging on the platform, you are thinking that person must really be good at what they do. You don't know whether they're good at it, but the fact that they are engaging and charismatic on the platform, and this can be any type of room. It can be a small meeting, an informal encounter, or it can be a big stage in front of many hundreds or thousands of people. You think that that, that person is perhaps more competent than he or she really is. They certainly, you certainly feel they're more competent and able to do the job and more of an expert than the competition. And again, that might not be the case. So, you know, they give their talk and then after their talk, you want to get to know them. So you, you hunt them down at the event, you rub elbows with them, you exchange business cards, you hope that they are interested in you. You think about how you might do business together. Then you get back to your office and you link in with them and you try to set up a meeting with them and you think about how you can refer them to others. So it really is a tremendous business builder. And so if it can build their business in this way, again, they may not be as good as their competitors, but you think they are. And this is a great reason, number one reason to get better at these, okay? If it can build their business, it can build yours. Number two, it's an accelerator. I kind of just made this point, but you will book more business as a result of this. And isn't that what business is all about? You wanna build your book of business. You want to increase your revenues. Um, you know, this is the kind of thing where you, you bring in the money first and then you take that money, that income, that revenue, and you can invest it in other types of business infrastructure. Um, you know, again, isn't increasing revenues the goal in every business? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, here's another one. It is not subjective. People think, well, okay, it's a subjective thing. People look at you and if you're a good um, a presenter, it's subjective. It's, it does, there's no rule. There are no rules around it. And that's false. There are plenty of objective and well-researched reasons that we know that people like me know when somebody is engaging. And so there are things such as the way we evolved. I mean, we are humans. We are social animals. As a result, we form tribes, we form groups, and there are group dynamics involved. And then naturally, we want a leader for that group. And the way we choose a leader is because we tr we a trust is built. How is that trust built? Largely by the way that leader communicates with the group. 
Okay. Uh, here's another one. This is a favorite. It's a beauty trick. It's a beauty trick. Um, I love this one because we are, we perceive people who are more charismatic and engaging as more attractive, right? So they may not fit conventional, uh, the conventional rules of beauty, uh, but because they are charismatic and interesting and engaging, we think they are. So, you know, that sure beats all the money that you can spend on cosmetics and hair care and all that stuff, right? Right. Um, it is not superficial or fluff. A lot of people think that this is, and I think this is why a lot of people put it at the bottom of their list. They think that, oh, this isn't the hard skills. These are the soft skills. These skills are not soft. They are essential professional skills. You've heard me say this a million times. I'm going to say it a million and one. Um, the idea is to make it easy for your prospects to make a decision. And isn't that what this is all about? Making it super easy for your prospects to make a decision about whether to bring you on or not. Um, it, these are the skills we have to deploy to get across our message, our subject matter expertise, our authority, uh, and, and whatever is on paper as far as our resumes go. So. The next time you're thinking of polishing up these skills, gaining mastery over them, or the next time a less qualified competitor eats your lunch, and you know that this is true, think about putting this skill as number one. Put it first instead of last. It is the glue that binds them all together, all the other skills together, and it will make your life easier too. If you want to learn more, hop on over to ruthsherman.com where you can subscribe and download some free stuff and subscribe here as well. Thanks for watching.